This is BVI Channel 106, where we address hot questions. I am Queen Madu, your host, and with me are two gentlemen at my right. Uh, Engineer Nibu Anthony, the Administrator of the Customary Government of the Indigenous People of Biata. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. At my left. For the the Secretary of the Near Human Rights Nation Active. And uh, the coordinator of the FBI relationship. You're welcome very much, sir. All right. Today we have some questions we are going to address. Sir, the first question Where do indigenous people of Biafra anchor their legality within Nigeria and global community? The indigenous people of Biafra anchor their rights within Nigeria because they understand what is provided within the law through the constitution which is the ground law to the nation. Nigeria today, the constitution of Nigeria is being generated from two customary settings, which is customary law and the uh, Sharia law. And this Sharia law is in the constitution, recognized the customary law also in the constitution to recognize. And these two that are the basic laws in the nation that grows the laws in practice in Nigeria has their government. And the indigenous people of Biafra is the indigenous people that generates the customary law that operates within the customary sector. So where are we going to get our legal rights? Our legal rights are gotten through the rule of law. The indigenous people of Biafra has their legal rights through the law, the rule of the law. And that's where they are right. If they stop their rights and they've been delayed, they go through it. So where are we going to get it outside the country? Nigeria. Global community, yes. In outside Nigeria, it is as a United Nations declaration, a chapter made, which, is, which has an article in Article 19 to 22, an African charter, adopted into Nigeria and in Nigeria in 19. Okay, so where can we get our legality? Yes, is adopted in Nigeria as made by the United Nations. All right, thank you, sir. So, what is customary government of indigenous people of Biafra? Um, well, just like my brother has presented here, the customary government is a, a leadership government that is anchored in the law based on the customer rights of the people. Before the advent of the colonial masters here, there, are, there were people who were living in this part of like, the world, the Biafran people, and they were governing themselves who desperately, but they were using the customary law to govern themselves. So that group of people that we are here, governing themselves, have a government which is based on the customary law. It is that government that runs the customary law. So the customary uh, government, as you said, derives its powers from the customary law. And that is what the customary government, uh, that is what, how the customary government evolved. It is the government of the elders. The elders gather their people according to the constitution, according to the law, train them, nurture them, make them to be law abiding. In other words, it's the elders, it's the government run by the elders. That's the customary government of the Biafra. Of Biafra. It's the government run by the elders, whereby they, they can now gather the people, but since we are still in Nigeria, that government is still under the Nigerian constitution. It still operates within Nigeria. But you, we, as we are now struggling for our uh, sovereignty, we must make sure that that government pursue that struggle for sovereignty through the rule of law, through that, uh, the way it's stated in Nigeria and the International Convention and International Law. And that is what we are doing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. In what ways uh, have indigenous people of Biafra tried to exploit the provision of self-determination as declared by the United Nations. Good. In the of Biafra have just followed 
the rules in searching for your right. Unlike some other world, so some other countries in the world that are the to through war. We've gone by that, we failed in the past. This time around, we're trying to find what application the United Nations has said that has to be in, in use to have any freedom. And that is why indigenous people of Biafra, through the arm, duly registered in Nigeria according to the Constitution. So how have you been able to explore that provision, that self-determination as a nation? How have you been able to explore it? How have it benefited the indigenous people of Biafra? Yes. We've just gone to court. Okay. Followed the court according to how as declared by the United Nations. They have to follow the rule. A rule has been set by the world governing body. Right. And that's the United Nations. So what have been the benefit? Yeah, the benefit of it for now yeah. is that the world has known that the Biafans are not in the way they saw them to be. World like people, they are not abiding people. Biafans are not abiding people. That's why they decided not to follow war. That's why they decided not to follow anything that would break the law in looking for their right. Today, the case between Nigeria and Biafra is subsisting in the Federal High Court at Owele. Okay, thank you. Far, many youth are afraid to mention the name Biafra. So, what could be the course? You know, a whole lot of youth are they they don't want to associate with anything called Biafra. You understand? Especially the youth. Maybe I, I think the the struggle have really been on the elders. So, why are youth not involved? Why are they afraid of the name Biafra? I think I I really disagree with you in person. Um, Actually, those people you call elders were youths when they fought the war. And after fighting the war, due to the conspiracy that was discovered during the war, Biafra um, agreed to a truth. And there was uh, kind of laying down the arms. And after that, the war continued. We cannot say that actually the war has ended because from then till now, Nigeria has been fighting the war secretly, eliminating people, whoever mentioned Biafra, whoever said Biafra anywhere. In fact, they used arms, guns, to intimidate Biafra, violence. And that is why people are afraid. It's not just, in fact, it is recently after the emergence of mass up, that building people up. It was Masov that actually broke the jeans. And the youths gathered around Masov and said to chant Biafra. And some of the elders who really actually observed or witnessed that war, who were afraid after seeing what happened and subsequently what had been going on, we are not even comfortable with the youth coming up to shout Biafra. But luckily, the customary government pick up again, bring the brought in a billion human rights, a legal body, okay. and took this matter to court. And that taken to court is to confront Nigeria legally about the rights that they have been infringing on, about the rights of Biafra. And by taking the court, the court aspect, that is the legal aspect, I approach, many elders now come up again and started to mention them. So right now, you can walk around the streets, you hear youths, elders, all talking about Biafra. I drove myself down to this place with this, downing myself like this. I know I met some law enforcement agents on the road. We greeted, and then so I'm coming out of my vehicle. Many youths were telling me, hey, Biafra, 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 you know. So right now, as I'm talking to you, the legal aspect of this struggle has unbottled our people. And right now, our people, are really eager to have the right. Thank you. Thank you. So, why is it that some Biafras are being killed? Uh, that's a very big, boring question. That has to do that the judiciary.
you see accepting in Nigeria. Because uh, I wouldn't see reasons, justifications from a country, Nigeria, that is recognized by the world. That is even signatories to the most treaties that will maintain peace. So giving safety to its citizens. And when they come out to look for what they sought that could be their right within the ambit of the law, not outside the law, because the laws are then made. The law enforcement agents are there to track people who are going out of the law. So have they ever humiliated anyone? That, that is one thing I'm trying to tell you. I'm telling you from the own going to put everything inside, you see that the actual thing happening. Now, it's not all that too good. Trying to kill innocent uh, 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 demonstrators of Biafra. Have those people been killed? Are they operating within the law or outside the law? Those people, that's, that's, within, that's the question for the security agents. Okay. That's the question for the security agents. And I'm happy that this question is being put on air. So that they actually see it themselves. Because uh, if a person is said to have gone outside the law, the, the proof for that has to be. If the proof is not there, it means the country is, uh, is dehumanizing its subjects, which online the law document, which is wrong. So that's the question for the law enforcement agents to answer fully. But I'm happy this question is being put on there. Awesome. Okay, so what's the final message to the people out there? Final message to the people out there, viewers watching, is that in as much as self determination is a natural thing, every person has a right to have his freedom. And freedom is only when you have recognized who you are, then you demand your right. But it must go within the law. So I'm asking my best to the use of the is that every person should share himself, see from the past what has happened, and look forward, the present what is happening now, considering how the world is hand handling this matter now, okay. and see that the future of the right is on the way. Alright, thank you, sir. So what's your advice to our viewers out there? Well, um, I think, uh, let me touch a little from the question you're asking, why are people being killed? The truth is that Nigerian government do not want anybody to mention their family. Nigerian government do not want their crap to come up again because they are enjoying the resources that is in their family. Unfortunately, Nigerian government is doing that because it has the backing of some from the belligerent international community who are also benefiting from the exploitation that is coming from the African land. And based on the need for that exploitation, they are subjugating the African people and they don't want anybody to mention them. But the killing has no justification. The law has never authorized any army, any, any security operative to kill anybody, except when the person has been condemned by a court of law and ordered for execution if, it's, uh, if the penalty for the offense is committed is life or is death. If not, we have no right to kill anybody. That somebody is demonstrating or protesting on the way, there are so many ways you can stop the person from block crossing each of any way and stop him. So my advice to the people out there is that they should not succumb to the intimidation by Nigerian government and Nigerian security operatives, our people must demand for their rights, demand for freedom, demand for referendum, which is our people's right to self determination. But we must do that within the ambit of the law. We must follow due process. Don't come out in any violent way. Do it. Support the customary government so that we get our freedom peacefully and legally. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's a privilege to have you here. Thank you very much. And that is it for today. If you enjoyed our program this week, make sure you join us next week.
I'm your host, Queen Madu. And um, subscribe to our YouTube. It's going right to your screen right now. Subscribe to us and um, follow us every week. Thank you. This is BBI Hot Seats. See you next week. Bye.